All right, good morning. We're out here this morning going to uh, get the camera right, we hope. And uh, I said in my last video I was going to show you how to build an arrow. So I'm going to, to build one. I got some river cane here. Uh, and this, as you can see, it's pretty crooked. We're going to, uh, to straighten it up and build it. I'll show it in stages, but it it's, takes a while to build an arrow, so you, you know, you're not going to be watching that long. But as I'll, I'll show you what I'm doing with each part and get it done and then uh, go to the next step. I will tell you a few things. The river cane, I live in South Georgia and it grows. I actually got some on my own land right here growing. But uh, you can get it pretty much anywhere in, in the South, along rivers and things like that. And uh, take some practice to figure out which ones are the best. But, but you, I mean, you know, with experience, you'll learn that. But it makes a fine arrow. It makes a pretty good arrow. There's some, there's some tricks to it, but, but nothing really hard. I mean, I've built some arrows. I did everything perfect, spined them, and they wouldn't shoot. <laughs> it's that simple. And uh, I just couldn't get them to shoot good, no matter, no matter what. But I've got better at it. And the last, probably eight of the last ten I built shot really good, and the other two. I save for squirrels in the trees. So uh, anyway, we're gonna get started building the arrow. I'm gonna show you, I got a knife right here. I guess you'd call it a knife that I bought. It's not expensive. I, I, it couldn't have been more than 20 bucks, 25 bucks. I bought it at the Walmart at the store there in town. And if you were gonna build bows, arrows, stuff like that, this knife comes in really handy building self bows if you don't have draw knives and things like that and it's, it's uh i mean it's, it's just a it's it's a very sharp and it's made pretty stout it's, it's made pretty solid i've seen some big old knives like this that didn't cost much money that that wouldn't hold up but this knife holds up pretty good you could you could uh i just heard a turkey gobble But anyway, I've heard many of them gobble, but never this late around the house here. But anyway, you can use them to, uh, use it to a lot of stuff, but I bought this when I saw Ryan Gill build a bow using a, a, a knife, a, a big knife, and uh, I've built, roughed out my bows with a hatchet. I got this, this hatchet right here. I've actually built a complete hickory bow, and it's the only hickory bow I got that stayed together. And uh, it shoots good. I rough out, roughed out my bows with this hatchet right here. But uh, this thing works good too. And and you can use it for this stuff here as far as working on your your arrows. And the first thing that we would do is uh, you got to get these rough spots off here where the nodes are at, and you have like a little sprout coming out there. And you could take your knife here and, and just go down it and pop those off. First of all, these, these I cut these river cane. I bet I cut them six months ago and they don't have to dry that long. I, I cut some that I built arrows I hunted with last year. I cut them and laid them in the sand out there in the heat and they were dry in a couple of days. And uh, believe it or not, if you leave the limbs on them, they dry faster. I can't explain that, but they do. But anyway, this, this cane's been in my barn for that long and it's plenty dry. And, uh, First thing you do is go down and get those rough spots off. And uh, go through all of them and get it all off. I'm gonna do that and then we'll come back and straighten it. All right, for straightening the arrow, you have the, these, uh, let's see if I can get it where you can see it here. You have these places, this is a node right here. And there's the other one. And then you have the places in between. What I do is straighten the places in between the whole length of the arrow. And the arrow still be crooked at the nose, but I straight get all those straight. I learned this from Nick Becker, by the way. And then, after those are straight, I go back and straighten the, the joints and get those straight. And I do this with heat. I start at the end here, and uh, I have, there's, 
you know, if you want to be a hardcore, you can build you a fire up there and heat it. A heat gun actually works really good if you have a heat gun at your house, and uh, it won't it won't uh, catch the wood on fire. It won't scorch it. And I you got uh, I got one of these rigs right here. It's what I'm gonna use now. And uh, you just you heat up a section. That one there's pretty straight. You can't get it in the heat or it'll it'll blister, catch on fire. And you just bend it straight. Put it down in the fire there, and you know, I know you can't see it, but I got it over the fire. I'm not to get it too hot. And then you just go down and, and straighten each one. All right, now I got all the, uh, in between the joints straightened, now we're gonna straighten the joints, and you can see how crooked they are. <laughs> so let's uh, get them, when I heat these, I'll show you right here. You know, you get about about this far away from your heat. You just burn it around. If you hold it, see how I held it just a second, it turned black on, you don't want that. You wanna move it around, heat that one spot. When you get it hot, you'll feel it give. Still, still not hot enough all the way around. Begin to get straight there, didn't it? You don't want to force it and break it. You get a place that's frustrating to you, you can't get it just right, go on down to the next place and come back to it. And uh, before you know it, you'll have them all straight. And this is time consuming, it truly is. And, uh, but that's, you know, if you want to make primitive errors, it takes time to do it. And some of them will be almost straight to start with. All right, I got her pretty straight, but see if you notice, I got like pretty much a fishing pole right here. So uh, I'm gonna cut it down to arrow size. I happen to have a spine tester and I took it in there and in the barn there and I didn't wanna move all this crap and do that. But uh, I got it spined for what I need, which is about 45, 48 pound spine. If you don't have a spine tester, your knock-in should be about you know, it, for that spine, for me, almost every one of my arrows are at about this size here, about like a carbon maybe. And you'll have to build some arrows and shoot them. If they shoot, they shoot. If they don't, they don't if you don't have a spine tester. But if you do have one, and, and they're, they're fairly expensive, I think mine was like $75 or something like that. But it's, it's not a bad investment if you plan on building a whole lot of arrows. But anyway, I've got it marked here, and I also have it marked where I want the cock feather at. It'll, you know, because you can rotate these a half a turn, and the spine may vary by 10 pounds. And one thing that I will tell you, if you build these arrows and you don't have a spine tester, shoot it. If it don't shoot good, flip it over. Flip it over and, you know, shoot it the other way. And, uh, you know, turn the knock and shoot it the other way, and it'll, it may shoot for you. And you can bear shaft these things if you and uh, get them to shoot. Mine are 30 inches, and, and you got to remember the spine will be lighter because you're not shooting a lot of point weight. Because the uh, the the chirp or obsidian arrowhead you're shooting, they probably a heavy one might weigh 70 grains, but I would bet the average one weighs 50. And it's um. Uh, they're just not, not that heavy. And you can, uh, I'll beef up this and I'll show you, I'll, I'll put uh, some wood or you can use trimmings off your cane and fill the hollow place up and make that good and stout in the front. Uh, and I'll show you that in a minute. But now we're gonna cut it off. I've already got it marked here. And uh, you know, tuning carbons or something, you wouldn't cut the length until you're shooting it. But I, I already spined it and I, I already know about what length I need and I cut mine a standard 30 inches. So there's a whole lot of things you can do to cut it off, but uh, 
they use saws and this and that, but you can grab the old case knife and just score it real good around around your mark. Make you a couple rounds there, don't cut your thumb. And usually, it'll pop right off clean, clean as a whistle. And save this piece, you'll use it for plugs maybe on the other end. And I get this area pretty doggone straight. What's cutting the other end off now? I get it pretty straight. And then when I get it cut to length, I go back, it's less air to fool with. And, uh, and, and re-straighten what I got. So we're going to do that now. All right, here's our arrow. It's the length that we're going to have it. And it's actually pretty straight. It's got a few little crooks in it. I'll get them out right now. Using our heat the same way. And uh, we'll straighten this thing two or three times. But uh, right now it's, it's close. And it's got a couple little straight uh, crooked places. I'll straighten it up. Be right back with you. All right, I told you we were gonna plug the end of this thing. It's hollow. It's got a, this works out this time that the node is way down here, so we got this much shaft. If I only ended up with, the, if the node ended up being down here, I would, uh, I would drill that out. So I would, cause I wanna put a stoutness up a good bit. So, uh, and, and I take this piece, take your pocket knife there and don't cut your fingers off. I say this because I maxed it wrong and just cut you some little tiny strips out of here. All right, when you get your, uh, you know, we got our little shims cut there. Get you some of this stuff, you know, put it in the hole there. I guess y'all can see this stuff, but you, you know what I'm doing. Put you some in the hole. And I actually have a piece of hardwood that I had trimmed out what I do with it. I'll use it. That's a little hardwood uh, dowel I, I got. And uh, then I'll put these little shims in beside it to, for filler to make it tight. You want it, you want it to be in there pretty solid. But be careful and don't force it in there and split your shaft right here. Let that set, and then you'll, you cut it off there. The next thing you want to do is we'll fletch this. And I use, uh, I use these feathers I actually bought these feathers, but you can use, I, I've, I've used uh, turkey feathers, you split them and sand them smooth, you don't want to breathe that mess, it's not good for you, but you can do ever how you want with them, but I bought these feathers, and uh, very, if you buy them or whatever, when you cut them to your shape that you want, find a pocket knife, and, and I believe, I use big feathers, I want it to straighten the air out pretty quick. And uh, they say long range, it drags the air down. I don't care because I don't shoot long range. I'm a, a close range hunter. I, I plan my shots to be 10, 12 yards and I want this air straightened up quick coming out of the bow for penetration. Because it, you know, you can shoot a 100 pound bow if the air is coming out of there sideways, you're not gonna get much penetration. That's a good flying air, the air is everything. A good flying air will get you penetration and feathers you know, you do all the tuning you can, but also feathers help. When you shoot the self bow, not cut the center. You, you know, you don't have a spine tester maybe. You gotta get your arrows flying good. That's very important. But air don't shoot like a bullet, you don't wanna hunt with it. Maybe for squirrels or something, but, and that's what I use all my junk arrows for, is for squirrel hunting. When he runs up a tree and thinks he's okay, he's not, <laughs> I'll shoot at him. So. We'll uh, talk about the feathers right here. I'm gonna let this dry and cut this out the end right here. It's kind of in my way. But uh, I guess the first thing we should do is we'll cut us a, a string knock in here. And I do this, you can do it. You can take one of them flint tools and saw that joker or you can 
If you got a bandsaw, you can cut you a little knock in there. I'll show you a trick I learned from my buddy Chris Bikes. And it you can make snap-on knocks out of these cane shafts. Let me show you how that works. All right, what you do is most everybody has a drill, right? You get you a bit that's the same size as your string. It's that you want it a little smaller than your string, okay? And I mean, there again, now you can do this so they're all primitive way. You can scratch it out with whatever. But right, and, and I'll build arrows like that, but I'll showing you how to, the average Joe at home don't want to go through all that. So I'm going to show you how to do this. And you drill a hole. See how I drilled a hole in it? All right. We took our drill, drilled us a hole here. And what we do, you take your utility knife, or you can take a piece of whatever, how primitive you want to go. But you can take your utility knife, stick it in that hole, and put it upside the edge, and just pop it out right there. Pop you. Make sure you're going straight. Push it with your thumb. Push it out. Do the same thing on the other side. And I drilled my hole a little farther away from the uh, end of the arrow than I want my knock to be. And I mean, it don't matter. I, you, as long as you're up there pretty close. And then you just look at it and keep trimming it until it looks about right. Even on the sides, but don't, don't get it real wide because you're gonna sand in there a little bit so it don't get the sharp edges off so it don't cut your string serving. So, uh, you know, you wanna leave it a little bit, little bit narrow. You see what I did there? You see the where I drilled the hole is a little bigger than the slot. And uh, if you choose your drill bit just right with practice, you get through with this knock, it'll just it'll kind of snap on snap on there pretty snug, and it works pretty good. Then you get you a little piece of sandpaper, and you stick it in there, and just just sand those edges there, work it around. You'll sand it to, to fit, sort of. Have your bow strung up there and, you know, try to put it on and don't force it because this is wood, it'll split. And uh, you get it where it fits on there just like you want it. And remember, if you get it a little bit too wide, you can always heat it. You don't want to try to smash it like you, you know back in the old days, you'd bite your knock on a plastic knock to make it work. You don't want to do that, this is break. You just heat it a little bit and then squeeze it into place like you want. So we're gonna sand this and get it get it sanded about like we want it where to snap on and I'll show you the finished knock. I like to cut my knocks kind of pointy and I trim it back some. If you have from the throat of the knock and it's real long, it'll give you bad air flight. And it, I mean, it hurts your accuracy. So I'll, I'll trim it down a little bit and then I'll cut, like point my knocks off, then I'll take the sandpaper and make it round just like a regular knot you stick on a carbon air. And uh, you can make, you gotta put some detail into your knots and make them, make them fine. This has a lot to do with how well your air shoots. Make sure you don't have like a, you know, the knock is not centered. And that's one reason I like doing it with that drill bit. I can take and put a little indention with a, my knife in there so that the drill bit sort of like has a pilot and it goes through, you can't force it or it'll split. I drill that hole and then I can work off of it. And the hole is smaller than my string so I have a little room there to work. And so uh, I'm gonna sand this off and we'll have a finished knock. All right, we got old killer strung up here. And uh, you can see we got us a knock. And see, this is what I was talking about. I got this a little bit long. When you draw the bow back, it's, it's still, you know, you want it seated good but it's still gonna be a little bit too long. So I'm gonna trim this down a little bit. Another thing, when you, like my knock, I shoot a high knock, it just, I, the, it tunes for me like that. And even though I shoot split finger. So what you have to, and you can see it's a pretty high knock, I shoot almost 5 8 knock, knock high. But when you put the air on the string, the bottom part is touching the string, but there's a gap at the top because I shoot a high knock. So what I want to do, I'm going to 
even though if it was square, it'd be touching on both sides. I'm going to trim it a little bit because I want the string touching the top and the bottom. I want it flush in there. And uh, I don't know, it's just redneck logic. It seems that if it's pushing off of one side, then that won't be good. You want it pushing even. And so I'm, I, I, there's a slight gap. I don't know if you can see it. But there's a slight gap in there at the top where the bottom is, is snug. So I'm going to sand the bottom a little bit so it fits in there tight. And I'm going to sand some of this off. But uh, it's pretty good. It actually is too tight. I'm gonna, I'm gonna. You don't want your, you never want your arrow fitting that tight on the string. It needs to almost not fall off, but it needs to take just very little force to get it off of there. You can see it snapping on there, like I told you, a snap knot. As I begin to sand it a little bit, it'll still have that little bit of snap to it. All right, we're gonna sand it where it sits flush. I'm gonna cut a little excess off the back and we'll be done with the knock. All right, now it's time to put feathers on here. You, you need to uh, get you some sandpaper and lightly sand where your feather goes here. There's some like some wax on this cane. It's like a waxy cover on this cane here and, and I'm not sure the glue will stick to it. So to be safe, you can get that off with some sandpaper, lightly sand it. And if you need to touch your joints up on this thing as well, they're a little rough. You know, we used our knife there and got it, but they could be a little rough and sand them off while you're at it. And so, uh, fletching, I use, I bought these feathers here. That one's been a little bit. You can make your own. If you're going to make some feathers, I, you know, split them and uh, flatten them out. You know, I'd encourage you to make sure you don't breathe that mess. It's, it's not good for you. But I, I shoot the yellow feathers. I know the hardcore guys, they want to shoot the barred turkey feathers. And I got some arrows made like that. My buddy Dendy gave me a sack full of those feathers. But I simply cannot see them in flight, especially in low light condition. And that's the beauty of it. archery to me is watching that arrow go. And plus, in a hunting situation, it shows me where my shot was at, where my impact was. And that goes a long way into finding my animal or to know where I hit him at. Do I need to give it some time? You know, it's just, it's just I want to know. I want to know where I hit him at. And so the, I can see these feathers in flight. I can't see the barred feathers in flight that well. Sometimes, but sometimes not. And I'm hunting down in a dark swamp. The last few minutes of light, you know, when critters coming through there, maybe hitting a feed tree, I want to be able to see that feather. So I shoot the yellow feathers. Shoot what you want, what makes you happy. We're going to, uh, I'm gonna, this feather here is trying to fly away. I'm gonna take my knife and, and cut a little bit of the feather off the quill on this end here and do just the same here, just a little bit. And what that is is for me to wrap the, the string around the, you know, tie it to the shaft. And uh, I'm gonna go ahead and trim those off and I'll show you the feather after that. All right, I got my feather right. You can see I trimmed a little bit here. It's got a little flat place, a little bitty place here on the back of it. And then you wanna, if you have some sinew, that's fine, go to town with it. I'm willing to bet that 95% of y'all don't have any sinew. So go to Hobby Lobby or wherever your craft store and buy your roll of this fake sinew. And uh, when you get it, it's pretty big pieces. And what I do is, uh, I, I get, I take it apart here and get thin pieces, get little, you know, smaller pieces off of it. And uh, it won't be so lumpy on your arrow. Just separate it. So I got a, a little small piece. You could actually use dental floss if you wanted to. Dental floss would work good. And uh, I take take my old glue again, grab my arrow, and uh, just put a little dab on here, right up towards the knock end of the arrow, smear it on there. And another thing that I do, I have that excess there, I grab my little string that I'm going to use, and I put it on there. And it gets that, that glue, that uh, string kind of sticky. And here's where you need uh, three hands. 
as you lay the, I'll go ahead and get me a one wrap there to kind of hold my string. And then I'll set this thing down where I want it and wrap it one time. That holds that one feather. Grab another feather, kind of even around. You know, I got to put three of them on there, so I try to space them out just right. And wrap it a couple times, and it's in place. Then I grab the other one. Some people use two big feathers. I've never done that. I'm sure it would work. I see a lot of guys doing it. Mark Harrison there on uh, Omnivore's quivers that's what he does all right so then we got those those tied on there see what I got I just come on up and I'm gonna put a little bit more glue and we're gonna go ahead and, and support our knock a little bit now by, by meaning we're gonna bring that wrap on up to our knock and wrap behind our knock to keep it from splitting when we shoot the boat reinforce it a little bit Go a few wraps there. Don't take a whole lot. This stuff is pretty strong. And then uh, we go back down and wrap those three. They're actually pretty doggone even. I ain't got to move them, so I'm going to tie them in pretty stout. And just let it, uh, I left the tail there to tie with. So we'll go ahead and tie this off and let it sit a second. I like for this end to dry before I start on the front side. That way I can pull my feather tight. I'll show you in a minute. There we go. Let's let that set a minute and then we'll pull it down. I almost got those things a little bit too close, but I think we'll be fine there to my knock. That'll work. So we got our feathers tied there on the on the uh, knock in. Now we're going to run a little bead of glue on each feather and around the the front of it right there. We'll do that real quick and then tie them in place. Or you can a lot of times you can just uh, put some glue on that shaft after you get them tied in place. Either one will work. But a little bit of glue and I'm pretty messy. I'm a, most of you guys will be way neater than I am at this. I can't help it. I mean, I'm the kind of guy that when I'm painting something, it, it's, I'm covered in paint. That's just how it works for me. Into my work. <laughs> but, uh, hot today. I can tell that already. Put you a little bit down there around the base for you glue the stick. Grab your string. And it don't take a, remember, you can pull them apart and get you a thin piece. Put some glue on your fingertips there, wipe your string, get it good and sticky. That helps out a lot. And um, everything's falling over there. And then you get you a wrap, kind of away from the feather one time just to hold it. Hold it and hold your string in place. And then uh, pull your feather down. I shoot left feathers, left wing feathers. So if you look at it from the tail end, my feather will start and come to the left. A right wing feather, you'll tie it and it'll go that way to the right. So I want to offset it a little bit. Pull it down, offset it just a hair from where it's sitting. And give it a wrap. Grab the next feather and do the same thing. Offset it a little bit and give it a wrap. And then the next feather, do the same thing. It's kind of hard to do this in, on camera and hold the feathers all at once. And uh, pull it down as tight as you can and give it a wrap. And I got, I can already tell I got one that's not even. So I'll, before I really bear down on it, I'll go around and look at them, get them kind of evened out. whole lot of helical right there but that'll work one thing I do before I snug it down now you can see some of the gaps in this 
I'll grab it. You can grab it with your knife too and just pull it tight. That'll close that gap a little bit for you. That looks pretty good there. I think we can make that close up. And I'm going to tie this off. I, I won't have all this on there when I finish my feather, but I want to hold it in place right now. There you go. It's got a good bit of helical in it. And uh, some gaps that will get out. That's why you got that, that glue. I put that glue on there. It's kind of tacky. And uh, notice I kept this kind of long. Now what I'm going to do is go around this. Pull it in there. Nothing real tight, just enough to snug those feathers in there up against the shaft. And I don't tie it, I just wrap it up here a little bit. And that's got all the gaps closed. We'll let that set a while, and then we'll come back and glue the sides and we'll have it in place. A lot of heel coat on that, that's pretty good, pretty good. All right. One thing I do when I get my arrow this far, I'll actually go shoot it a few times to make sure it shoots good. And, uh, I mean, how else are you going to know? <laughs> and so it shoots good. So now what I'm going to do, I'm going to take and uh, decide what point I'm going to put on it. And I'll pick this point out. This arrow is kind of small on the end. It's not as big as some. And so I will put uh, this point. I did a really good job. I've got it flaked thin. And uh, I'm going to uh, set it on here and get an idea and, and notch me a little notch me a little loop in here <laughs> so that this will fit in. It'll, it'll fit, and it's almost perfect right there now. But I'll take a little bit of that out real quick. With uh, I'll turn the camera down here. I've got my stuff here. I can show you. There you go. I'll just take a little bit of this out here. And make it fit that air. Let's see how that does. Oh yeah, that's just right. Now we're ready to put a notch in it. So this thing will slip in there for us. Let's do that. Well, there's all kind of ways you can do that. You can do like the primitive man and get your knife that you got serrated and saw you some holes in there. You can do it on a bandsaw. Or you can use the Chris Spikes trick. Get a, a bit that matches your uh, the width of your point, and uh, drill you drill you a hole in it and cut it out like we did a while ago. Okay, notched it just like we did our knock a while ago. I drilled two holes, one down and then one about halfway, and then took my knife and pushed them out. Another thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna make it a little bit pointed on the sides. I'll just start there and cut a, a little bit of that out. I gotta remember to get this up on the camera here. We can do a lot of trimming as we go, but right now we're just kind of roughing it out. And remember we take our sandpaper, you can take your, your knife and cut that out pretty even, but we can, before we go very far, We'll see how our point fits. And then we can take our sandpaper and sand where we need to to make sure we get a good snug fit. Like right now, if you force it in there, it's going to split your deal here. So we can get it, we can eyeball it a little bit and see what we got. We got to take quite a bit out, but not as much as you would think. This point is pretty straight, so let's take our sandpaper and sand in there a little bit. Okay, we got her where she fits in there snug. Pretty straight. And uh, it's 
going up pretty far. We're going to take our knife now and trim down on the top here. We want that thin. We want a smooth transition. And I'm actually going to, I got it going a little bit too far past my notches here in my point. So I'm going to cut it back a little bit. Where's my knife at? I'm going to cut it back a little bit to about right in here. And then I'm going to, if you can see what I'm doing, I'll take and thin this a little bit. Right here. On either side. And we'll have it about right. Be right back with you. I'm going to thin this down some. Because I want to see how it gets bigger here. I want it to all be the same. I don't want it to hold my penetration. I want it to be smooth and, and penetrate for me. See what I'm doing? I'm just scraping that off. Remember, we have this whole field with wood, so and it's glued in, so it's still going to be plenty strong. It'll be stronger than the rest of the air, actually, because it's got that filler in it. There again, you could be doing this with one of them flakes off of that chert, but I'm using a knife. <laughs> and as you see here, I want the, these to thin as well. There you go. See how our point does in here. Centers up in there just right. How about that? A little bit crooked there, so we're gonna have to. It's actually about right there. Spinning pretty straight. When we get it glued in there, we'll adjust it. I want to take that down before I glue it in and let it be smooth. Smooth transition going in there. You see what I'm doing there? Same thing on both sides. I probably got it crooked there now, pressing on it. That's why I want to do it now, because when I glue it in there, that is a little long still. That way when I glue it in there, I don't move it when it's, once it's glued. There we go. All right, now we're gonna melt some pine pitch I've got. And, uh, it's about to get too hot there. I have a, an old burner here, an old camping burner, one burner deal. I got my pine pitch in a little tin can and it's melting up there. A little bit too fast. You don't want that stuff to, to burn up. And you gotta have your, something to apply it with. Another use for your bamboo. This is pretty simple, yeah. I take my point, I remember which way I, I, I mark it or whatever, the way that I got it set to go. And I put some, uh, pine pitch right here on the ends of the air, air head. And I slide it in place. And this stuff is pretty good stuff. Look at that. That's spinning pretty, pretty tight right there. All that fitting before gluing worked. I take and push it together a little bit so I know that this is how I want it set. It's spinning true. Got a little wobble there and I think that's in the very tip of my point. Nothing to do with the way it's hooked up there. 
So there you go. You can sight down it, make sure that everything's straight. But that's pretty good. Got one little spot there that ain't quite right. There we go. Spins perfect. So now, I'm gonna spoon up some of my pine pitch and fill in the cracks. This stuff holds surprisingly good. And if you don't have pine pitch, you can do a search on YouTube. I think Ryan Gill, several of them guys have uh, recipes for this to show you how to make it. I actually bought this little bit I got right here from Ryan Gill. And, uh, and I've made some out of pine, pine uh, sap. There again, you get into that time thing, and I simply don't have time to do all that stuff. And so uh, I bought the pine pitch. But if you just build a few areas, you can use some two-part epoxy or there again, it depends on how primitive you want to be. When I get it on there, this stuff is still a little pliable, and I take my thumb and pull it down. I want that smooth transition. When it goes in between them ribs on the deer, I want it to be smooth. I give it that smooth transition. And that would hold it there, that would work because that's all your force is going behind it, pushing through. But we're gonna come back and tie it with our sinew there. Let me get my sinew and glue, I'll be right back with you. All right, there we go. We do the same thing we did earlier. We get a, cut a piece of sinew, fake sinew off a roll there. Separate it, get us a smaller piece out of it. There's trying to separate, and we'll go ahead and do it. Get us two small pieces out of it. Then we get our uh, Native American glue. Put some glue on this air all in here. We're gonna wrap that so this air don't split on impact when we shoot something. That big old dough. Get a little bit on our finger here. No. Uh, Get our piece of string slicked up with glue. Let's put this in our lap down here where we can see what we're doing. And then we uh, smear this around here really good, get it everywhere, and start wrapping it right here. Get right up against the point there. Make you some good solid wraps. And then go, the first wrap that you go up to your notch, can y'all see this? You don't want to pull real tight. You want to use it for like a cushion because it may cut it. Then snug it up. Well, see it cut then? That flint is sharp. But no, no worries. We'll start all over there with it. Snug it up. Do the same thing over here few good wraps and then your ladder ones kind of snug them up pretty tight and go back down this this thing wrapping and we'll tie it off right there actually what I'm gonna do on this one I like I, I really believe in overkill when it comes to wrapping up this part behind the the shaft behind the arrowhead because if that thing were to hit something solid it may just split and not have any penetration so and this is pretty small but i'm gonna get my other piece of of uh sinew come here glue put some more glue on it and glue up what i already got up there be fine put some on my string here and we're going to wrap this up a little bit better. That 
That'll probably get it. We'll tie this one off. And it's, you know, people go to a lot of trouble wrapping and tying, but truth of the matter, this thing may not get shot once, but once. And I'm good with that. And uh, I just, I wanted to kill a deer. That's all I, that's all I ask of this arrow right here, whatever I shoot at with it, a deer or a hog. Take your, uh, and get that gone, let it on down into place. And I like to uh, heat, kind of heat stuff a little bit. Let that uh, sinew mix in with my pine pitch. Just a little, I don't move nothing because I've already got it like I want it. And we'll come back and get this excess glue off after everything cools. And there's your arrow. And there is your, your finished arrow right here. We got to clean it up a little bit. And it's ready to go. It's gonna show you one other thing. We were talking Talking when I made the uh, point the other day, I was telling you about the point I killed a deer with. You have to excuse the glue stuck all on my hands. But this point, see the red on it? That's from the second deer I killed. This is a kill cook flake. And uh, it's narrow. And it's a fine point. It's a little triangle. It's not wide. Still got the blood on it. And it wasn't broke loose from the hafting at all. And uh, I could probably, the arrow wasn't broke or anything. I could probably, could have shot something with it again. And uh, had the serrations, it worked. I shot the deer, hit the deer perfect. Shot the deer like nine or 10 yards. Perfect in the, above the pocket and stuck in the shoulder or the leg on the other side. And the deer ran about 60 yards. So uh, that rock there is a killer. <laughs> a killer rock so it I mean they don't have to be beautiful to work you can see the how I've evolved a little bit with my points a little length and not quite as wide to help with penetration in case I shoot a big old 200 pound sow for the freezer so that's how you make an error I know I would I would encourage you to uh, to look up Ryan Gill on YouTube and uh, he goes in much better detail than me, and he's he's better at explaining things, and and uh, he can, he builds some fine arrows. And if you have any questions, he he uses uh, a lot of the he uses regular real sinew and stuff like that. And I have some that has not been dried, and I may do that later on. But but uh, this stuff, you know, I'm I'm using stuff like the ordinary Joe who wants to dabble in this a little bit would use, and so. You know, there you have it. Everything you can get you some sinew off the back strap of a deer, or you can go buy a roll of this fake sinew right here. You can, uh, I mean, it all it boils down to me as building hunting with a bow. I made uh, arrows, I made these arrows, and, I, and I've made arrows using nothing but primitive stuff. And um, you know, it's a lot of work, I don't have time for it. I enjoy it, I love the hunting part of it. And I love the building part of it, but there has to be this balance because I also got a job and I got to keep Miss Tammy happy with stuff around the house. So, you know, I have to do sometimes I have to build what's, what's quick, the easiest way. And so that's that's what the era that we built today, I showed you that. And uh, and we had a lot of time in that era. And what I normally do, I'd get like a dozen arrows or cane shafts and I'll get them all straight then I do it in stages, and then uh, and I'll fletch them with my fletching jig. Once I get them straight, the knot cut in them, then I'll go in there and fletch them with the fletching jig. And it's it's much the the quality of it's better for one. It's easier, faster. Get them all fletched and come out and shoot them. Make sure they shoot good, and then put points on them. So um, there you have it. Thank you for watching, and. Uh, I don't know what we'll come up with next, but we'll do something next. But that's how I build arrows from a primitive bow. 
and uh, thank you good lord for a fine day I'm supposed to go back to work in two weeks I'm tickled to death I finally get to go back to work that means there'll be some fishing and hunting time along with that because I am about bored to death yesterday I walked uh, if you don't know this first time you watch this I tore a muscle in my leg a couple weeks ago and so I've been hobbled a little bit but anyway I'm my mailbox is like 250 yards from the house. I made that walk yesterday on a sandy road and I actually painted my pump house yesterday, which that ain't hard. This pump house ain't big as nothing. I did it with a roller. And then uh, going up the steps to the house, when I got through with that, I like to fail and broke my neck because I put my bad foot first and all the weight went on it when I went up the step and it collapsed on me. So I got to do a little more brain work with my walking until I get healed. Thank y'all for the prayers for me, and uh, see y'all next time.